Well, hello there. I'm glad you could join me. And uh, I thought that I would share a few thoughts about my chosen way of life, my religious belief, and uh, look at some of the misconceptions perhaps that people have in general. Now, I know that many uh, who watch this talk will be committed spiritualists. Now, some say that we should be committed, you know, talking to people who are, don't appear to be there, um, you know, claiming all sorts of uh, weird and wonderful uh, manifestations in the name of spiritualism. But uh, I think that the general public, people who are not aware of what spiritualism really is or what it really means, are uh, misguided sometimes. And I think as a result of that, many of us spiritualists actually suffer because uh, there are some people who are psychics, many in fact, who have developed their psychic abilities, uh, whether they have developed their sort of natural gifts in a natural way or whether they have uh, come within the remit of spiritualism in the way that we conduct our circles, our developments, our meditations and so on, that actually work towards honing those psychic gifts um, in order to raise the uh, mental frequencies of those so doing to attune to the higher range of frequency on which spirit input is provided to us. We all understand about frequencies when it comes to communication. I'm communicating with you on a particular frequency and uh, on a particular wavelength and so on in order to speak with you at this time uh, in, in this medium that we use. As a medium, myself and as mediums everywhere understand we are indeed the uh, receivers and transmitters of information and communication from those in the world of spirit the spirit world is not some sort of you know distant planet it's actually inter interwoven with our own physical universe because without that we maintain Without that spirit connection, the physical would be nothing, would not actually exist. And if you think about that, if you think about the great spirit that we call God, who imbues everything, that's actually how it all works. You know, we come into being through the great spirit and through spirit. And we, if you like, it's a kind of a uh, grid on which we all exist in both the physical and the spirit. And um, there are people at the moment, I was appalled actually, when I was uh, had my attention drawn to a particular um, group site, you know, on social media, you know, everybody has now access to uh, the whole world really in a physical sense and through our spiritualist practitioners and indeed our psychic practitioners are also able to um, contact make have that contact made with them uh, through this same medium uh, spiritualist what have always been considered spiritualist practices but I was so surprised i think that's a mild word to use when i saw some of the offerings on one particular site that called itself spiritualist um i think psychist would probably be a better word i'm not decrying anybody's way of uh life their chosen lifestyle but where it actually impinges and damages something that I hold dear 
and something that millions of people actually hold dear, and that is spiritualism. I feel that I have to say something about that. And I thought, what could we call, what could they call themselves if it wasn't spiritualist? Because spiritualist, as we know, has been a very misused term ever since it became common parlance. So way back in 1848, when we decided that modern spiritualism was born, the word spiritualist became very quickly uh, intermingled with the uh, word medium or psychic. So people talked about going to see a spiritualist. They still do. They don't mean they're going to see a spiritualist. They mean they are going to see a psychic or they're going to see a medium or indeed they may be going to see a healer. The, the word spiritualist should then be affixed to that if they are indeed a spiritualist, if they adhere to the principles of spiritualism. Uh, and of course, there are many of those, but they all roughly say the same thing, of course, because there are all sorts of spiritualist groups. But our main principle for all of us is that we agree and believe that uh, there is an infinite intelligence, a great designer, God. And we believe we are all one, that we are all in one family of humankind. And we believe, of course, that life is eternal and is given to every one of us as a birthright. Well, they're the basics of spiritualism. And also this idea that we also uh, work on a vibration of unconditional love. Love is not best expressed by cursing or aggressive language or saying unkind things under the banner of spiritualism or being a spiritualist. And that's why I felt that perhaps we ought to look at who calls themselves spiritualist and whether we should be looking at educating to explain that not all mediums and psychics are spiritualists. And indeed, those who take the work and uh, work in a way that we would uh, feel was insulting or denigrating to our way of life um, and present it in a way that we would not like, um, disrespectful to the recipients, disrespectful to spiritualism itself, um, we would perhaps like to see the word spiritualist taken out of their uh, immediate uh, appellation. So um, this just brings me to this uh, difference between psychis psychism and spiritualism, mediumship and, and psychic work. And uh, the juxtaposition, the connection between the two. I'm not surprised that people get confused. I'm not surprised that people think they're going to see a spiritualist when they're actually going to see a medium or a psychic or, you know, a card reader or uh, any of these practices, the psychic practices that are actually associated with spiritualism itself. However, um, I just felt that perhaps we needed a different name for that so that people could actually operate quite happily under that umbrella and we wouldn't be lumbered, if you like, with a backwash of uh, people asking us, uh, as I have been of late, uh, if this person says that they are giving uh, readings and uh, they are swearing every other word, if they actually talk about uh, not having anything to do with what they called spiritual and then something to do with people's um, underparts, male underparts. Um, you know, you just wonder uh, whether spiritualism would be best served if it dissociated itself very loudly and clearly with that kind of presentation and that kind of uh, mindset. Because basically, as we think, so we are. And we understand that the mental process, the thought process, the spirit process is the most important. 
and to show love to each other. And we don't show that by aggressive speech or uh, denigrating others by uh, uh, cursing them, basically. Now, uh, what I did want to say was that, um, si oh, 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 I've got comments. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, Nicole. Oh, thank you so much. Hello, hello, Julie, and hello, Nicole. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, we know there are two of you. <laughs> Now, I don't know what uh, astrological sign you are, but um, you'll notice that in my, um, in my uh, description of what this was going to be about, I actually said that I was going to uh, give a demo of uh, what I call string reading. Now, this is something that I teach, or I have taught. I say I teach. Um, I, I've taught many... Uh, a circle and development circle over the years of course as you can imagine and um and indeed uh string reading is always featured and um i remember at one time oh, about 20 years ago now somebody set up in america where else uh, uh belly button readings now the fact is this that once you can actually pick up psychically from objects, you can indeed read from uh, somebody's midriff, uh, but we do choose not to. Perhaps that comes back to uh, what I was saying about um, denigrating spiritualism itself, and perhaps something like that would come under the uh, umbrella of, of something we could call psychism instead of spiritualism. So if somebody could say, I'm going to a psychist instead of a spiritualist, that would be really good. So you heard it here first. I have coined this word, psychist. And um, where we are all psychists in that respect, uh, many of us have moved on from that to develop our mental faculties uh, further and become uh, mediums for communication and contact with the world of spirit, which, as you remember, I mentioned it all around us. Now, I hope perhaps that uh, some of those spiritualist sites, if they discover that psychists are using their their sites to uh, to um, basically do down spiritualism by their manner, by their presentation, and by their language. Uh, perhaps they'll remove them or they will think of changing the name of their site to a psychist site and not spiritualist. So there, that, that's my two penneth for today about that. Um, so I know that uh, in every spiritualist meeting, every service, we have mediumship. And we also have psychic practices. I've seen cards being read, angel cards, for instance, being read in a service by uh, mediums. Um, I've seen flower readings, uh, and they're very nice too. Um, all sorts of things, uh, readings from photographs, which I suppose isn't really psychometry or it's not really psychism. It's actually um, looking at somebody's photograph and saying to them on the other side, uh, here's this person here in this photograph here. Uh, can you give me some information about them? So that's uh, a little bit, actually, of what goes on with lots of us who are mediums who practice psychism as well. Now, uh, I talked about uh, demonstrating uh, string reading for people born under particular astrological signs. Well, what's astrology got to do with spiritualism? You ask, well, you could say, what has um, tarot got to do with it or? yoga got to do with it or anything really um as long as i say as long as it it burnishes the name of spiritualism and doesn't tarnish it that i think is the, is the benchmark that's our linchpin so i um uh, for instance i mean uh grace cook who, who was a great spiritualist medium um she founded a whole organization called White Eagle, 
uh, the teachings of her guide who uh, represented the um, uh, the group that is called Zodiac. And of course, they they have a lot to do with astrology, yoga, uh, other Eastern uh, teachings uh, within their own. Um, but of course, my uh, organization to which I belong is the New Christian Spiritualist Society. And we follow the teachings and example of Jesus. And um, we try to do our best to uh, conform to those uh, to those teachings and that example. Difficult though it may be sometimes. Now then, um, I have said, haven't I, that I would uh, give stream readings for people born under Capricorn, Cancer and Virgo. There. So um, you might ask what are string readings? Well, I, 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 I cut three pieces of string. Here we are. I've sort of balanced them on this, you know, my usual thing here. We've got three, three, three pieces of string. There you are. So those of you who've been in my circles will all recognize this. Some of you will, it would even remember using laces out of your shoes where we didn't have string to hand where spirit suddenly prompted me to say well right they're going to learn string reading well and i've said they ha i haven't got any string that's all right shoelaces so we've actually read shoelaces and and one adept bless him is now passed to the world of spirit uh, our uh, one time vice president of our of our church uh, John Cox was very good at this. I have pictures to prove it. Now, here, here I am with all these strings, right? Now, what we do, we uh, I won't bore you too much because this isn't a development circle. It is basically people who would like to have a message, I'm sure. <laughs> uh, there we are. Uh, in fact, I have got, uh, right, I'm being reminded, um, there are videos, there's a video of, uh, me teaching string reading on YouTube. So there you are. If you put in Lynn Gibdiswald, uh YouTube string reading, uh, it should come up. There you are. So that that, that spares all those uh, who are interested in receiving a reading from actually learning how it ha has to be done. Right. So I have said uh, reading for you if you are born under the sign of cancer which is June the 21st to July the 22nd. A reading for you if you are Capricorn, and that's December the 22nd to January the 19th. And also Virgo, and that is August the 23rd to September the 22nd. And um, you might be interested to know, for instance, oh, uh, I see, I'm, I'm trying, I'm, I'm sort of thinking about uh, doing this work for you. I'm also getting instructions from behind me over there uh, telling me what I should be doing because uh, it, nothing without God, nothing without the help of my spirit helpers and guides. And uh, we'll start then with, with, uh, with cancer and um, I'll pick up a piece of string. Here we are. Wonderful. I'll put this, these two bits down here. There. Now, here's the string, right? It's a very perfectly innocuous piece of string. I just unraveled it from the roll that Kathy had bought, and uh, probably for tying up flowers or something, but uh, I, I've commandeered it. So here we are now, then. I shall put a little bit of fluence in it and ask. And uh, again, say this is for those uh, born under the sign of cancer, right? And then I shall throw it. And I don't know if you can see that. There's a lot of light. <laughs> um, now, uh, cancer, you are a water sign. That's to start with. And you are exceptionally emotional you can see that by all this you know turbulence here if you like if you can see that yes yes you can i think you can see that 
Um, I don't know if perhaps I can uh, close off a window curtain here. Um, there we are. She said, slowly getting up to do that. There we are. Now yeah, coming back. Oh yes, there we are. You can see that a bit better. Now you can see all that turbulence. You see, so water sign. You're exceptionally emotional and ultra sensitive there. And uh, your intuition is to the fore, and you certainly know uh, what you like and what you don't like. Um, and water signs uh, give you uh, a deep understanding of other people, and uh, you always support your loved ones there. So that's that. That is uh, generally thought to be true of all those who are water signs, and that includes, of course, cancer. Now, I've thrown this, and I'm going to take this end as your beginning and uh, tell you that um, it's showing me that you had uh, a reasonably uh, prompt birth, uh, that for a little while, you seem to be okay. You seem to be fairly reasonably all right with life. But then uh, I'm seeing here that it took a turn and you basically went off a, a tangent because it's sort of gone round in a circle. So you, you should recognise this, that uh, perhaps as a very uh, young teenager, um, you didn't really perhaps uh, go in the way that you would have preferred or other people wanted you to so you actually um you know went off on your own but came back to it eventually and got back on the right track but then whoops off you go again look at that that's an absolute mountain there you've had to get up somewhere there i mean i'm saying sort of late teens early 20s there um you've had a mountain to climb or at least it's been a little hill <laughs> and uh, it's not always been pleasant for you um, and then it, then I'm afraid it dipped uh, very quickly, but then it levels out. And you see that, again, you have this wonderful uh, circular movement where you, uh, you continue on your way, uh, managing to overcome all those obstacles. And uh, back you come. And I'm looking to see where you have ended up. And there you are. There you are. You're looking more uh, calm. You're looking more happy within yourself. And uh, please know that even if you feel a little bit down at the moment, that all that stuff that you that you've uh, that you've been through in your life is actually putting you in good stead for a, a better future and uh, a future you do have so i think that's very important to say that to you now i hope that um uh, if you are somebody who was born under the sign of cancer that that makes some sense to you as a reading for you and uh look it was just a piece of string there see wonderful there you are so um and now as i promised I can't see anybody else uh, making any comments or anything. I hope that we're uh, that we are continuing and that you can uh, see what's happening here. It does say to me here that uh, I can't post comments to Facebook, but uh, anyway, uh, I'm presuming that some can be. Here we have now. Who should we have next? We'll have Virgo. Now Virgo, August the twenty third to September the twenty second. And Virgo is an earth sign there. So you are a grounded person and you bring other people down to earth. If they get a bit flighty, you can pull them back. Uh, you're most usually reserved and realistic. You can also be very emotional there. And here we have your string, which is bouncing around out of my hand. And there we are. Wow. There. You can see that. that that's that's vibrant now um this is also uh 
something that is showing that uh, you have lots and lots of uh, energy within you and uh, you stick by people through hard times. Now then, your reading. A fairly quick entry into the world. Oh my, you've had a most exciting and interesting life. Nothing has been ordinary for you. Now, I know that this may seem a generalization, but I can really see um, all the twists and turns that your life has taken and how you have been uh, affected by other people and um, you've tried hard to hold on to a sense of um, you know, down to earthness when sometimes it's been very hard. And uh, I can see also uh, that there is a love of music here. I can see music there. I can, I can see uh, a love of movement. I can see a joy in life. And you love to look on beautiful things and you love the landscape. Um, I also see hills and and uh, beautiful scenery associated with you, and it's something that in your life you would dearly uh, you would dearly prize. You you love the nature, and uh, all of that is there. Uh, beautiful, beautiful uh, sense of uh, life and the reality of life, and even the hard times for you. Um, have been uh, offset by uh, by people that you've been able to feel something with and uh, to feel sympathy for. And you're somebody definitely who always thinks about other people before yourself, in fact, too much so, I would say. Leaving yourself open, you leave yourself open a lot. Um, yeah, and of course, as you know, uh, this is a this this is a motorbike village, uh, so you're bound to hear some of that going on. Now, I would also say that uh, you have people that are very dear to you that are, of course, on the other side, and you feel their loss very greatly, and that uh, this way of life fills that need, and it's wonderful because you're always sort of feeling to yourself. I miss them so much. I know they're there and I just wish that they were still here. And, you know, it's very difficult, but you are indeed a lovely person. And uh, I just say to you that where you are now, there you are. You see, I'm looking at this string to see where, where, where you're ending up because it's, it's almost hidden. There, let's take that. There, you're just, oh, yes. Wow, you really, you've done a sort of a, a, a victory roll here. Now, can you see this? Maybe you can't, but um, there's so much light here. But certainly there's this beautiful loop, the loop, and uh, where you are at the moment is on the way up. There. Um, if I could only show you that properly. No, it won't let me, but it's here, and it's showing you looping the loop and coming back up there so um, I hope that you've enjoyed that um, it's very hard for me to actually continue without knowing if anybody is um, is actually uh, watching or not but uh, we'll, uh, we'll we'll continue anyway and it keeps telling me that uh, comments can't be posted or whatever um, there and then there's a little thing they're saying, having issues, question mark. Well, I'd rather not even go there. Oh, Angie. Oh. Angie Dickinson. Um, I'm actually going to do another string reading. And this is because it's this is a, a demonstration of psychic work. And although, as I say, I always work with my uh, guides and helpers in spirit, these are basically psychic readings. And um, 
I'm trying to actually demonstrate uh, that as spiritualists, we can give psychic readings and we do get some help from them on the other side. And of course, there's nothing I do that is not helped by them. But this is just demonstrating that. So, Angie, um, uh, I can tell you that um, when people pass through the world of spirit, they are always free of pain and suffering because pain and suffering is connected with our earthly life. It's not connected with our spirit life. Our spirit is free of pain and suffering. Our spirit it soars. Um, you know, the spirit can't be destroyed. It can't be hurt. Um, I'll talk more about that in a minute, but let, let us continue with the string reading. Um, and here we have, uh, now what did I say it was going to be? Capricorn is next there. So Capricorn is if you're born between December the 22nd and January the 19th. So here we have this. There we are. Look. Oh, do a day medna there on that, shake it around a bit. So you, you can, if you're doing psychic work, you can have a play now. Put some fluence in that and then throw it. <laughs> now, now this isn't as uh, knotted up as that last one. So you see, it's all they're all different, so that they can all be different readings. It's fascinating. Now, this is another earth sign so there you are you have somebody who is practical who loves nature animals and connected to our material reality very much and uh, i just had to uh, stop a phone call there unfortunately which nearly interrupted us um the other thing is this so if you're doing psychic work you know, being interrupted doesn't really matter because you're getting all this from psychic emanations. Um, if you are actually in contact with them on the other side, got a link with a loved one there, things like, you know, bells and noises and all sorts of other things can really disturb the vibrations and uh, can be a problem. But certainly not when you're doing psychic work. So there you are, you see. Uh, we just ding that off for the moment and I shall carry on. Um, now, again, we have that loyalty and stability and how uh, how people on that. Um, I really will have to stop that um, and how people <laughs> uh, really you stick to people through hard times. There you are. That's you if you are a Capricorn. And um, we look at the string itself. We see that you popped into this life. Um, you had a fairly smooth uh, uh, first little while of it, and then it went even better. But then it sort of sunk down again, and uh, things weren't as easy. Well, I think it's probably when you first realised that you were in the world, and that things weren't always what you would like them to be. So somebody who uh, you would be somebody who likes things to be nice and and get upset when you realize that things aren't as nice as you would like and i think that happened to you um as you were growing up and uh then then it seems that you had a, a long period of uh perhaps uh stability yourself um perhaps early teens and then suddenly it all went up in the air so there you are um and you basically had to decide what you were going to be doing, um, how you felt about other people, um, how you felt about your family. All those things met, mattered a great deal to you. And in fact, uh, deep down, uh, because you're probably quite reserved about that, um, still do. And certainly I see this uh, really uh, coming around to uh, a situation where you really, really love somebody. And uh, this uh, string reading isn't telling me whether that was something that the other person um, uh, felt as well, but certainly this love 
has kept you going all your life. And uh, I feel that you have been able to um, to use that uh, feeling of love uh, to do good things in your life. You're somebody who would be known for doing good work. And I know that um, if there was anything good that you could do, you would do it. And even to the, the point of, I'm going to stop that. Stop that. Right, I think I've, I think I've managed to stop that. <laughs> As I was saying about psychic work, <laughs> if this was a mediumistic communication, I think I'd probably be absolutely flawed by now. But um, as it is, <laughs> and the other thing is that this person here, whose uh, string I'm reading, these people here, all of you have that wonderful sense of humour. This I know, I'm picking that up from this. Um, you can make something happy out of the out of the most awful situation, uh, not just for yourself perhaps, but for other people around you, and you do spread happiness around. And I can see there that, you know, your life has been up and down and round, very busy. And uh, as we come back to where we are now, we're having a look at that. Oh, wow, look at that. That is really sort of that's full of love and and happiness and that is that is something that is going to carry you through. So there you are. So your life as you are now is going to uh, improve. There you are, uh, and carrying you forward. All those experiences that you've had uh, are being uh, turned to good use. And uh, and now the, <laughs> the dog has decided. The dog that's in here with me, who is Rosie. Um, she's decided to have a little scramble about on the sofa there uh, because that's what she does there. So I hope that you've enjoyed those readings from the string. There, look, three bits of string. There. So you see, psychic work. It helps because as long as it's good, it can actually hold a mirror up to you. It can make you think about what you're doing, and where you are. We're talking about linking uh, into astrology, uh, which is another aspect of our life here. It's, it's, a, it's a physical life because uh, the planets and the stars are physical objects in a physical universe. What we know is that for everything in this universe, there is a spirit universe imbuing it so in fact you could say that these are indications uh, of spirit as well as of the physical so there i hope that you've enjoyed that and um, now uh, what i'm concerned about is angie oh kathy <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, my my significant other, my other half, some would say my better half, has commented there. Uh, and of course, I now realise that she is also, I think she, she's Capricorn because she was born in January there. Now, uh, Angie Penelope Dickinson. You're talking about somebody who is now past a spirit. You're asking me if she's happy and out of pain. Don't know who you're talking about, Angie. But I'm asking my guides and helpers. I'm seeing fields of flowers. So obviously this is a lady who, who loved 
flowers. I see a lot of blue, which is of course healing. And I feel that a lot of healing was given. Now, would you like to, um, Angie, would you like to let me know any more or all of us so that we can follow um, message? Um, I can assure you, as I would assure everybody, that our life is continuous after this life, that when we, that when we pass away or when we pass over, we are never on our own. Somebody always comes for us. There's always somebody there. And uh, millions and millions of testimony prove that people who are lying, uh, people who are lying on their deathbed suddenly perk up, suddenly perk up and look as if they're looking at somebody that who they're really pleased to see oh you know and that is always the case that somebody they love someone who loves them always comes you know we come into this world on our own that's for sure we get shoved out and that's why we're crying when we come out i say because we feel absolutely bereft our spirit friends are no longer with us we're not in the spirit world, we're suddenly in this one, and it's awful, and we suddenly feel pains and aches, and, you know, we've just been squished out of a, of a, of a, of a, of a, a tunnel, and uh, we're into this, only what we see as a sort of, you know, we, we can't really see what we're doing. Uh, those of us who are born with a, a gift of sight. Um, and we're totally left here, we feel, on our own those seconds of, of actual physical life but that's not the case at the other end of it because when we go out we are met by our loved ones who are already in spirit and in that again in that infinitesimal microcosm of a second we understand ourselves we are going home we are going back to that place that we cried so much when we left we're going back to that place of happiness. And that is what I can assure you is the case. So Angie, your mother-in-law, uh, remember what I've already said about the flowers and the, and the blue for healing and everything. And um, I, can, I can see someone, yes, thank you. I can see someone who liked to be seen at her best and uh, wouldn't like to have been thought, um, you know, not all there. <laughs> that's what I'm getting, that's what I'm hearing. Um, so someone who is definitely in charge of herself, and uh, she certainly wouldn't like to have been uh, as she was, which is having to be uh, looked after and, and nursed and stuff like that. That's not, that, that's not her, that wasn't her. And uh, I can assure you, that uh, all of the indications I get from uh, the other side of life is is only happiness. I can see a group of people there, um, and they're waving. And I'm sure, yes, yes, yes. And some actually from you know I would say sort of way back, so people in that look more like 40s costumes and things. Um, you know, in the 1940s and the way they had their hair and everything. Um, and again, uh, mostly women who I believe were to do with your mother-in-law and well, I'm sure they were. And uh, I know that uh, she is happy and uh, I'm looking at what's that? I'm looking at things that look like bottles. You know, when you have sort of, uh, pickle jars and things like that, I can see those uh, around nearby. So I don't know if that's what they're doing. Um, and I feel it, you know. I feel very much uh, like I do when I see the the lovely ladies of the WI, um, and feel that those those uh, interests would have interested her too. So um, I'll leave you with that, Angie. I hope that that's um, helped. Um, if you can actually um, uh, let us know if that if that uh, means something to you. 
certainly I can assure you that uh, that she is perfectly well, perfectly well, and with family and friends, and uh, still and still yes 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 and still comforting and caring those left behind. There you are. So dry your tears. That's what I'm asked to tell you. Everyone to dry their tears. Be happy for her. There. She's fine now. There you are. So I'll say God bless you. I hope that you've enjoyed this time with me. I, I, you know, it's it, it's rather sort of uh, a time of. It is a bit like speaking to myself, as you can imagine. And uh, that's three times I have stopped my children phoning me <laughs> on your behalf. So um, I will have to ring, make some phone calls now and uh, explain myself as ever. Um, I know that other mothers out there will understand exactly what I'm talking about. And, you know, sometimes we can't do anything right, can we? So I shall say God bless you. If you uh, are suffering in any way at all, I wish you better. I wish for healing for you. I pray for healing for you, your friends, your family, and of course your dear animals. And we ask at this time for all those who are suffering to be made to feel well again, to be comforted and know that they are loved by the Almighty. And we know his eyes are on the sparrow and we are sure he watches over each one of us too. Amen. So there you are. I'll speak to you again soon. And don't forget, I'm being reminded here, that uh, we ought to make sure that people understand the difference between what is a spiritualist and what is a psychist. There, the new word, the new term, a psychist, okay? So there we are. Us spiritualists uh, understand that uh, life is a spiritual matter. And, um, oh, Tammy. Thank you. Um, I shall probably have to go and have a, a hot drink now and possibly a little lie down. Uh, this is this is what comes of uh, getting on a bit, you know, but uh, we can't knock it because um, as I always cheer myself up and others, um, you know, Moses was 80 when he heard that voice from the burning bush, 80 years old. So, um, you know, there's hope for all of us. And uh, I wish you a very, very good rest of the day and night. And I look forward to speaking with you again. Bye for now.